Hi, I'm Ruth Mejber and welcome to Adorama TV. Today I'm delighted to be joined by Jerry Andrews. Jerry's work features Ireland in the 70s as well as some stunning images from across the globe. Today he's going to talk to us about his work, some of his techniques, and hopefully share some tips and tricks with you too. Adorama TV presents Out of the Dark Room with Ruth Mejber. I'm delighted to be sitting here in the National Photographic Archive of Ireland and joining me is Jerry Andrews. Jerry, thanks so much for joining me today. So tell me a bit about the, the exhibition that you've got going on at the moment. I know they're stunning black and white photographs and they're all taken in the in the seventies in Ireland, is that right? Yeah, they're they're a series of photographs I took from years nineteen seventy one to about nineteen seventy eight. And specifically, they're portraits and images of the Limerick Milk Market. Um, the market, the Limerick Milk Market, was established in 1852, and the images that I took were of the characters, the people that traded in the marketplace just before the market was closed down. Because during that period, it was a crumbling building; it was in danger of collapse, right. and it was very evident that the people that frequented the marketplace when I took these images, once it closed, that those people would be lost forever. So for me as a photographer, I was capturing a vanishing Ireland. Wow, okay. And is it wrong to assume that's kind of a theme throughout your entire body of work? Because I've been having a look over not just what we can see here today, but over other projects, let's say, that you've done in your career. And that kind of is a little bit of a theme, it's vanishing cultures almost. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, ex I'm really, really interested in changing cultures. I like capturing people, environmental portraiture, and I particularly enjoy going to cultures that are changing and where dramatic change has taken place. Mm. Um, and it's something that I'm, you know, it just, it, it adds to the interest of the photography that I know the backstories to the individuals, their culture, their environment. Yeah what's changing, what's evolving, and to capture those people before that culture changes forever. Yeah. So I see it as a kind of a historical documentary of their particular environment and the people that are being forced to change. And it's, it's forcing change, I suppose, is, is what attracts me to the, those locations, be it Ethiopia, Burma, or whatever. Absolutely, because it's not just Ireland. I mean, you're looking at these, these characters that existed in the 70s in Ireland, and you're not going to find them in modern society here, to be honest. You know, they're, they're a lot different. Um, and then you put yourself in different locations around the world, and you seem to find almost similar characters with such expressive, you know, portraits. But how do you do that? How do you pick and choose where to go next? It self-selects. Um, it's very evident where change has taken place. Um, I suppose you could say I'm a traveller interested in photography. Yeah. Um, you know, I just love travel. And I like to travel to locations that are remote, that are pretty off the beaten track, really, in yeah. many respects, that is not the normal destination for tourists and so on. And, um, and that's, I'm attracted to those type of locations. And invariably, you'll find people such as the characters you see around yeah. here in those locations. So the two of them gel quite, quite well yeah. for me. So tell us a bit then about the planning that goes into the trips that you take. Because, I mean, I've read the stories. I know that um, they are completely remote locations, that you are sleeping in a sleeping bag, looking up at the stars, all this kind yes, of thing. Yes. So what happens um, to get you to that location? Uh, do you make contact with these people first, or do you just go and explore? No, I go and explore. It's a little bit of serendipity, I suppose. Yeah. Once I've established a particular location, I find then, you know, the area that probably is of greatest interest to me once I get to that country and then I travel to it and I take it as it comes. Wow, okay. I tend to, I tend to be a little bit extreme in some of the ways I approach these things, but, you know, it's, it's, it's what adds to the mystique and to the interest of that. You must be very confident then as well to just kind of yeah. present yourself to a tribe of people who, who, who've never met an Irishman before and, you know, all of a sudden you're there face yeah. to face. Well, you know, people are fundamentally the same all over the world, no right. matter where you go. Uh, I've yet, touch wood, to come across anything that was dangerous or anything like that. I've been lucky. Um, 
No, I don't have difficulties. You know, I, I take it as it comes, as I say, and uh, you know, so far it's all worked out for me. Yeah, you must have encountered some really different cultures than our own. I mean, does, does that change the way you photograph someone if you're listening to their stories or you see their, their habits first? It does, but my photography is all based on trust. Um, okay. The type of photography, I, 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 don't, I don't believe in putting a long lens on a camera and hiding behind some kind of um, an obstacle and photograph people in a, in, in a, in a surreptitious way. Um, I prefer to engage with the individual, mm. build up a trust, build up eye contact, and because to me, capturing a portrait is through the person's eyes. Yeah. And if I don't get the character of the individual, you know, reflected through their eyes, then it's a failed portrait. I mean, so it's I pretty much engage with the individuals. Absolutely. I mean, that's really prevalent. I feel in your work that eye contact is is yeah. there throughout yeah. the whole thing. And it's my style. I could be reading the story of. of you know, someone that you've taken a portrait of, whether it be their tribe or them personally, and it could be a really horrific story, but yet you house, you somehow make them smile, <laughs> you know? So that I guess it is, that trust comes through then in your photographs, absolutely. Yeah, uh, I suppose, you know, people, people establish a relationship very quickly. It doesn't need an awful lot of time to, to establish a relationship with the person that you're taking photographs of. And if I believe that the rapport isn't there, if I don't think I've established that contact, that that mm. that um, essential ingredient for a good portrait, then I won't take the shot. Right. No point because you know it can't be contrived. Yeah. From my perspective, it has to be it has to be natural. It has to be evocative. And if it's anyway contrived, I'm I'm not interested in it. So you almost have a level of quality control before you even press Absolutely. the shutter. So your editing process starts beforehand. I suppose it goes right back to the to these kind of images when they were taking. You do everything in camera. Yeah. I don't know no. anything about Photoshop. Okay. I don't use Photoshop. Brilliant. Um, it's I do it in camera, and if I don't get the shot in camera, then. You know, then you don't get I'm the not, shot. I don't get the shot. That's yeah. fantastic. So, I mean, your technique must have changed quite differently from like 1971 when these pictures were taken and you were doing everything in camera, as you say, yes. because of course it was on film. Mm. Um, have you migrated to digital? Yes, yeah, yeah. oh, yes. Um, I use Nikon equipment. I've got a D800 with a D700 backup. Right. And um, for me, you know, it was a natural transition from digi from film to digital. Yeah. Now, I love the darkroom and I love everything about film. Yeah. However, the advantage of digital is just fantastic. I mean, yeah. you, you know you know what you're doing as opposed to, and what you're getting as opposed to, you know, waiting for the pro and, and if you're in remote locations, the prospect of processing film on the move is just not an option. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, rather than run the risk, I prefer to deal with digital. And so tell me, I mean, a lot of these pictures that you're taking of people who, you know, are essentially strangers that you've just met, mm -hmm. you're saying that you don't use a long lens. I mean, I probably would hide behind a long lens and just <laughs> zoom in rather than bring myself closer to the person. So what lens would you be using? Probably the lens I use most is 24-70, yeah. 2.8. Gorgeous lens. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a great lens and um, it's, it's just the right, the right end of a telephoto to remove yourself without being in somebody's face but at the same time not yeah. to be hiding as you say when you're taking the shot. Brilliant. Um, again to bring it back to just, and I hate to dwell on this, but you have just a, a great way of telling stories, not only with the image, but with the backstories that you present on your on your website and, and as part of the show as well. I mean, how does that fit in with you with the, with the photographs? I suppose in many respects, um, the, my, my primary love is that of photojournalism. It's not just photography, I also like writing. Mm. And I like the backstories behind. It, it just adds a new dimension to the individual photographs that I take if I get a backstory to the individual. But it's in understanding the backstory to that person. Can you build up the trust and really be, because you're finding out about the individual before you ever take the photograph. Mm. And as a consequence, by the time you come to take the photograph, you've established a rapport. Yeah. And um, yeah, no, but the backstories are 
an important ingredient in oh, my yeah, work. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it gives you kind of a fuller dimension of the, of the person. I hope so. This is Ruth Mejber for Adorama TV. Don't forget to check out Adorama's latest contest online for your chance to win some amazing prizes. What I find really fascinating about one picture is, I think her name is Maul. Yes. The, the lady with the hat. Yes. How do you make contact with someone? Because maybe you could explain a bit about her first. Well, I suppose we have to go back to the story of the milk market. It was established, it was, it was built in 1852. Maul's mother was born just as the milk market opened. And that was a time when Ireland had a famine and a million people lost their lives and a further million people emigrated. So when I was taking a photograph of Moll, she was in her late 80s, mm. nearly 90 years of age. And I just couldn't understand. I was only about 20 at the time. I couldn't understand the link between that lady and our historical past. Yeah. So for me, she represented a very dramatic period in Irish history. She lived a very Spartan life on the outskirts of Limerick, and when I took her photograph, she was the last member of her family line. Wow. So once she died, that, that was, was it. it. There were no cousins, no relatives. She was close on 100 years of age, and just wow. eight people attended her funeral, just sufficient wow. to carry the coffin. So that one photograph, for me, is just a story of adversity, of yeah. hardship, that went right through from famine times in Ireland through to a period when Ireland was at the cusp of change in the 70s. Mm. And she spanned that period. So for me, she represents mm. a vanishing Ireland. I thought that she was the image I wanted then to use as a backdrop to the exhibition and to the book. Yeah. Um, ultimately, it's a case of keeping her name and her story alive. Yeah, which you are doing quite strongly. So, I mean, Hopefully I know so. about them all now, and yeah, everyone well, else does. So, I mean, the, uh, the, when the exhibition hung in the uh, Hunt Museum in Limerick last year, um, we had a big banner draping the building of mm -hmm. Mall, and that was, it was really, I felt good about that because yeah. I, I thought, you know, I'm going to keep this woman story alive, you know? But a lot of what you do, you're, you're documenting all these things that are going on. It, it must yeah. make you feel good about it because you're representing people that otherwise wouldn't have a voice. Well, it's given me a different dimension to just photography. Mm. I mean, you know, there's information, the, the, look, the, the image overload, yeah. I suppose, yeah. is what we're all accustomed to now. And I just want to have a differentiation. And that's why the backstories are so important to me because it completes the story of the person not just photographically, but in terms of the narrative behind the photograph as well. And it's my way of more or less differentiating myself from other photographers. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, photographers might go and have a show which is image only, but the yeah. great thing about this is you can come and you can read the stories and you can make another connection. And as well, you've, you've put them into a book. Yes. And um, I love this though, because yeah, it is a photo book and you can flick through it like you would with any other photo book. But then as well, we have, we have stories. Yes. Um, tell us a bit about how the book was, was formed, was shaped. How well, do you make this? The book, the book evolved, like everything I suppose in my life, it just evolves. The book evolved as a result of the exhibition in the Hunt Museum. I was quite astonished that 45,000 people went to see that wow. exhibition in the Hunt. And for a photographic exhibition in Ireland, that's a phenomenal that's number huge. of people. Um, and there was a demand for copies of the images. So I thought the best way to satisfy the demand was to produce a book. And of course you've got a background in printing because yes. you spent many a year forming a printing company. Correct, that is my business profession, yeah. uh, profession. And both my son and I decided anyway we were going to put a book together. And we started on a Friday night and we worked right through the weekend. And come Monday, we had a book. You had a book. You did a whole book <laughs> we, we in had, one weekend. We did, yeah. We designed it, laid it out, wrote the backstories, and um, I wrote the backstories. Paul did the design and the technical <laughs> element of the book. And then we had it printed and bound in the following week. Of course, just so like within, that. <laughs> within, yeah, from, from cradle to grave, yeah. we had a book in about two to three weeks. It's very satisfying, particularly as a self-published book. And the book then went on to win Book of the Year Award wow, at brilliant. the um, Irish Printing Awards. Fantastic. So 
Yeah, it was it was very satisfying, but you know it was a it, it was um, a worthwhile project in that respect. And then they can also look at your website. And the greatest thing I love about your website is it's not broken up into your typical photographer categories, which is you know landscape, portrait, that kind of stuff. It's broken in. It's broken up by continents, <laughs> All right, which uh, you know shows your love of travel, of I travel. suppose. Yeah, I go wherever uh, I think there might be an interesting photographic project okay so i link my love of travel hiking with photography and it's a it's a great combination okay that's fantastic um, and you'll pick up stories along the way with a d700 and a d800 uh, on your back yeah uh, it's you know it's a, it's a lot of kit it's about 12 kilos um and when you're hiking from morning to night yeah it, that's got to weigh a lot on your back it does, just but to keep going with it. Yeah, it's, it's become problematic now because I've, in recent times, unfortunately, I've, I've, I've developed a tumour in my spine and yeah. it's, it's a cancerous tumour, so I've got to change direction while I'm uh, yeah. going through a treatment programme. Yeah, but obviously um, I'm going for a lighter kit now as a well. A lighter kit. I mean, if, if that's not the worst thing, I suppose, mm, is it no, choosing no. a lighter camera. No, no. And you, you mentioned to me earlier about um, about the treatment you're going through. Yes. I mean, not so much about the treatment, but how you're dealing with it in terms of... Well, I, I, I think life is a series of journeys for me. And um, I'm just going through another journey at the moment. Okay. And I'm photographing that journey. I'm taking photographs of my treatment while I'm going through it. And it's pretty extreme. Mm. But it tends to focus your mind on things other than the medical treatment. And um, it's an interesting process, actually, because the doctors are saying that I'm more interested in the results I'm getting photographically than I am in the results they're getting medically. Oh, no. um, but however, it's, it, it really is a challenging pro project because, you know, I am the photographer and patient. Yeah. And if the photographs, and the photographs have got to be at a certain level. Mm. For me, they've got to be standalone photographs that tell a story and to do that while being a patient is difficult but yeah I'm I mean, so far with the results you're on both sides of the camera really yes, yes. so and yeah if you want to keep quality control up it's a it. it's a lot of self-evaluation in every way absolutely yeah but i i um you know the the doctors and nurses are very they're encouraging me Okay. Um, they, they ignore the camera gear and focus on their medical equipment. Oh, wow. um, yeah, so I set things up in a tripod with some reflectors around the place, and then. Um, so you do a little photo shoot in a in a clinic or a, a yeah, exactly, during a yeah. procedure. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's bizarre, but if it's working for you, then that's brilliant. And but it keeps my mind occupied, yeah. and then I'm writing the backstory to it, not in a in a in a modelling way. Yeah. But in a way that has got some substance and interest and um, yeah it's it just another kind of, project must be kind of therapeutic I don't think it's just another project it's, it's well it, 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 I don't know if it's been done before I'm yeah. told it hasn't but I uh, you know, the photography has got to hit a particular mark for me and um, so far there's some strong images there and would you would you plan on exhibiting that or is it something you I keep for yourself I don't know I'll decide at the tail end I suppose the advantage is, if I was a photographer photographing a patient going through this treatment, there would be a very narrow divide between what was acceptable and unacceptable. Mm. But since I'm my own patient and photographer, um, there are no limits. I can full photograph access. whatever, yeah. full access. And therefore, you know, I'm not guided by any sense of restriction uh, yeah. that I might feel as a photographer. It's actually when I'm feeling at my worst, that's when I get my strongest photographs. Wow. So it's a case of being clued in to photographic opportunities while feeling crap. <laughs> It'll take a lot out of you, I'm sure, but you know what? It's I interesting. I do wish yeah. you luck with it. Oh, so tell me, when, when all that's done, yeah, yeah. what's next for traveling? Bhutan. Bhutan. November, of course. No, <laughs> it's November, not going to be somewhere like no, no, London or Spain. Bhutan. No, November 2015. Okay. Um, there's two friends of mine have already pre-planned the trip and this time next year yeah. all going well yeah. 
I'll be in Bhutan. In Bhutan. <laughs> okay. Well, then the, the summer after, I'm expecting another exhibition, and I can't wait. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Jerry, thanks so much. No, I really enjoyed welcome. speaking to you today, okay. and I, I can't wait to pick up a copy of the book as well. Okay, Ruth. Thank you so much. That's it for this episode of Adorama TV. Join me again, where I'm going to be chatting to some more great photographers. I'm going to be looking at their work, and I'm going to be getting some tips and tricks just for you. Bye for now. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.